In the patterns of biodiversity, we will be discussing about the latitudinal gradients of the diversity. So when we describe the globe and we see that that equator, it has the least amount of the latitude. But as you go above towards the poles or uh, in the north or below towards the south, the latitude is increasing. So uh, along with that increasing latitude, this is, you know, we call as the latitude gradient. And in that latitude gradient, there is change in the biodiversity. So the distribution of biodiversity over the land surface of the planet is far from even. So this is not even throughout the planet. The tropics contain many more species of both plants and animals than an equivalent area of the higher latitude. So uh, the tropics which are having the least latitude, they are having much more diversity of the plants and animals as compared to the polar regions. So here you can see the number of breeding bird and mammal species in different parts of the Central and North America. So on the lower side of the diagram, you can see uh, the birds in the blue color and mammals in the white color, the Guatemala and Costa Rica. So these are the uh, countries which are present in the towards the equator, while the U.S. states. Uh, California, British Columbia, and Alaska, these are towards the uh, much more higher latitude towards the poles. So you can see that in the Guatemala and Costa Rica, there is more number of breeding birds and mammals as compared to the California. And trend continues to towards decreasing uh, towards the British Columbia and Alaska because the latitude is gradually increasing more and more. And here you can see the number of species of frog in different parts of Central and South America. And that uh, data was taken from the Groom Bridge. So this is sort of Central and South America. And in there, you can see that towards the tip, uh, towards the Ar Argentina and Chile, there is less uh, number of species of frogs. But in the tropical rainforest of Brazil, Venezuela, and in the Panama and all the other regions in the Central America, there is much more diversity of the frogs and there is more number of species of the frogs there. So here you can see the latitudinal gradients of species richness for the swallowtail butterflies in three different parts of the world and that was the data from Collins and Morris. So here you can see the uh, on the left side, you can see the Americas, the South and the North. In uh, the North America is much more towards the higher latitude in the, uh, and there is much more diversity of butterflies in the South America. So is the case in the uh, Africa where it, there is much more diversity in the, uh, the Niger, Niger Delta. And if we see the Oceania uh, in uh, between the Australia and uh, Asia, there is uh, m there are tropical rainforests of the Malaysia, Indonesia, New Guinea, and all of those countries in in and archipelagos of the islands. There are much more diversity and of and the species richness of the swallowtail butterflies. So you can see that near the tropics there is much more uh, biodiversity. So regions with the highest ev uh, evapotranspiration are able to support the highest diversity of tree species. So evaporation and transpiration, the plants are getting more and more water, they are able to do more photosynthesis, productivity increases, productivity in increase means there is more biomass available, due to the more biomass available, the, the plants animals and all the organisms in the environment, they flourish due to the higher amount of energy in the environment. So evapotranspiration itself also correlates closely with the potential productivity of the region that we have just discussed. So in general, the equatorial regions are the areas with which highest productivity is possible because of the prevailing climate, which is hot, wet, and relatively free from the seasonal variation. So it is hot, it is wet, and 
there are no uh, you know most of the time in the equator there is summer there is n uh, if there is uh, the winter it is very very mild and then there is the energy hypothesis. The latitudinal gradient of the speci uh, species diversity suggests that the critical factor is mu how much energy is captured by the vegetation and it is supported by the plant based data. So much more energy is coming, more diversity will there be. And then there is the metabolic theory, the higher biomass and more complex vegetation architecture to host more animals. and when the animals are there, the warm, moist climates in which high productivity occur, this will result into the higher metabolic rates and that will result into the more and more uh, biodiversity of those organisms. And here you can see the number of tree species in the North American sites plotted against the primary productivity of those sites. A distinct positive relationship can be observed the data from the Curie and Pequin. So you can see the number of species on the uh, y axis while the pro primary production on the x axis. So you can see that as the primary production is increasing the number of species in that area increases which means that increase in the primary production increases the diversity or the biodiversity of that area. 